Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the YouTube account and we're gonna be checking out the Fire Treasure Scramble Guide. So overall guys, it's really good to bookmark these Treasure Scramble Guides because essentially, between having one iteration of going through the fire one, um, by the time we get back to the fire one, we do have some additional heroes, but a lot of the core heroes do stay the exact same depending on the formation. So let's hop over, take a look at the guide. I wanna break it down. Um, and a big shout out to AFK guys. Very cool for putting this out. So let's take a look at it. All right, guys, so here is the Treasure Scramble Volcano Debuff Guide from the AFK guys. Again, big shout out to them for putting this together. A majority of the visual guides that we see like this, we don't unfortunately see as many or see at all anymore. So I definitely wanted to um, run through this. I'm also gonna leave a link to the guide down below. So again, you can go to Reddit, you can bookmark it, you can save it, whatever you need to, to have access to this in the future. We're gonna start over here on the left-hand side looking at team one, which of course is on the rim. Now this has been a team through a lot of different iterations that works incredibly well. You can see we have Sophia in there. We also do have Damia and the rise of Ezio. So Ezio has made um, a presence in this formation and we've actually seen a ton of players using them. So essentially within this formation, Rem will do a lot of damage, Rem will get them low, Ezio will finish them off. You also have the buffs and the debuffs as well as the um, the immunity to death that we have from Demia, and then Sophia in there as a buffer and as a shielder. Of course, here we're running the Wing Lion or the Rock Lizard. The core team of this is Ulna, Rem, and Demia right here. Um, as you can see, this is the core. Now, a lot of players will have to sub in some of the heroes, which I love that they included this as well. So the subs in here, if you're not running or if you do not have that awakened version of Sophia, we do have Athalia in there, also, there is Joan and there is Yennefer. Now, I believe a while ago, Joan was before we had the Awakened version of Sophia in here. Now, if you do not have Ezio, the Awakened version of Athalia or Yennefer in there, and then if you don't have Demio, we have some solid buffers with Palmer in there and Joan. Now, the big thing to remember with this comp, guys, is when you're doing substitutions, this is really important. Um, make sure you build the core teams within the formations before you're subbing heroes in. So essentially, if I have Joan, if I have Palmer that is used as a primary hero in another formation, go ahead and use them there first because you don't want to mix up too many of the teams because these teams do work incredibly well. So that is team one, guys. We're gonna slide over to team two. This one, of course, is running Liberta and Lucila. Very, very strong. And of course, Elbeto. So Elbeto is still one of the absolute top priorities when it comes to our dimensional heroes. Rem, Emilia, Elbeto are probably the, the three biggest ones. A lot of these, including Merlin, you can get from the Challenger store or some of them you can get um, from the Labyrinth store as as a priority to get but you can see guys this is the core in here so we have albedo we have amelia and we have uh, merlin in here running talisman now there are a couple subs in here for lucila we have brutus which again i believe brutus is the original one that we ran within this formation Chimera is in here the awakened version of athelia and then we have liberta which again i believe the original version was running brutus in here um with mulan but we have athelia we have robin hood in here so very interesting that he is making a, a impression or, or a place here and Yennefer as well. But like I was saying just a little bit ago, guys, where Yennefer is used in different formations, you have to really pick and choose which ones you can build. Now note in here that Lucila must be paired with Liberta. Lucila's abilities do pair perfectly with him. That's why they kind of go together. If you don't have Merlin, you can do Joan. And again, this was one of the, the budget version right down here, which I love that AFK guys included this one. But again, this was the older formation that we were running. That was before we had um, Lucila and Liberta. This, this was kind of the formation when it was just running Amelia within that formation. Works incredibly well, guys, within this game mode. So looking at Team 3, this is the Matria comp. Like we've said before, there's a lot of scenarios where Matria is actually run by herself in different Curse Realm, uh, Treasure Scramble, Nightmare Corridor places. Um, but overall, when it comes to PvP, you can see it is all of them for the buffs. And she actually provides through the SP effect um, double buffs. So she will actually go ahead and get the five hypo buffs. Then she gets an additional five hypo buffs at the start of battle. We've confirmed this with Lilith um, that, that this will essentially give them double buffs in here. Now you can see her and Kinesa and Rook are the core. A lot of players haven't 
how I rebuilt Kinesa and Rook, but we have the Spider in here. So let's take a look at these subs, guys. And there are a lot of subs within here. You can see with the original version of Aziz, we do have um, Zorath in here. We have Ivan in here, which again, used quite a, quite a few different places. But staying with the Hypos is probably what I would consider the, the best option in here. So we do have Mortis, we have Kazar, we have the original version of Aziz. You can see even here for Frampton, we have Lucretia in here, which a lot of players do have built, as well as the other ones, Olgath, the exact same. Now there is a Graveborn comp sub, as you can see right in here. Looking at our Graveborns, this is running together with the Graveborns if you don't have Matria. So like I've said before, with Matria, she is the trigger to making this group. If you do not have Matria, you're going to go ahead and build another group. Like right here, we have the Awakened version of Shmira um, with Kanisa and Rook. And then, of course, the Graveborn comps in here. But if you do not have Matria, this, this group or th this uh, formation just does not exist because of that SP effect that she gets. Looking in here, we do have Baden in here. We have Grez in here. We have Oden. It has Olgath. And then, of course, Lady Simona is in there as well. Very cool to see that she is picking up a little bit of utility. Silas in there, Ivan. But again, take note of the heroes that we are using in different and other formations, making sure that you can make out the best teams that you can. Looking over here at Team 4, this is the burst team, guys. Now, Thane, the Awakened version of Thane, works incredibly well when it comes to uh, PvP. He's really an Awakened hero that was built for that PvP aspect. You can see the core in here. We do have Zorath, and then we have um, Chad or Vithiel, and then we have Tamaris in here, the Awakened version of Athelia, and then we are running the, the Owl in here. Now, one big thing to note is, is which SP effect that you're running. So this, this one, you'd actually run the Awakened version of Athelia for the SP effect is, is the one that I would choose over Thanes um, just because of the, the physical pierce and everything else. But looking here, Leica is a solid sub for both of those. And then right down here, you can see if you don't have Chad, we have Zafriel in here. And then there is a variation down here, a couple different ones. So the Awaken Leica variation, again, if she's not being used in another formation. Mulan is in here. If you have no Zolrath, this is the combination. And then, of course, the subs just kind of go on and on in here, guys. And then the budget version down here. Now, this is also really important to note, guys, is right here you have Orin in the middle. This is the budget version. So if you do not have that awakened version of Thane, um, Orin has been the substitution essentially since he has come out as a cheaper version. So even looking at the budget version even further up here is if you dropped out the awakened version of Thane and put Orin in this one while keeping the awakened version of Athalia, it still would work incredibly well, depending, again, a, a lot of that depends on which Awakened hero that you did build and who you do have built. So again, this one, I would just swap in over and right in this formation, keeping the Awakened version of Athalia built in there if that is the one that you do have built. So let's hop over to the bottom here, guys, and check out team number five, which is the Awakened version of Belinda. And you can see in here, because of the buff that the fire gives, or the, or the debuff that the fire has, that is the reason why we see like Rowan, we see um, Halos, some of them are still being used in different formations. It is running the Rock Lizard in here. And that is because, again, the debuff that we get out of this game mode changes it up a little bit to exactly what we can do. Now here, if you don't have the Awakened version of um, Leica, you can see we have Rain, we have Palmer. Now we have seen both of them, again, used in a ton of different formations. If you don't have Jerome, you can do Ivan, you can do Guineas. And then if you don't have Halos, you can do the original version of Aziz. This, of course, is going to be the big mana battery. Um, the energy regeneration part that we see within this game works incredibly well, guys. But again, the Awakened version of Belinda. If you don't have the Awakened version of Belinda, this is where this team essentially will not work. You're going to have to come up with another formation because it is not going to be viable. Looking at the SEAL team, now this has been incredibly, incredibly um, effective. This is the stall team or the SEAL team. Um, so essentially, you're going to have all of these heroes that have immunity or they're going to bring themselves back to life. Thorin has to die twice. You have to get through the immunity of Tresnar. Of course, the awakened version of it, or excuse me, the original version of Athalia can come back or of Taylene can come back to life. Flora will be flying. Baden is pretty tough to kill, allowing the seal to maximize or kill teams out. 
This one has had an incredibly high um, win percentage when you're looking at the treasure scramble, especially this mode has worked incredibly well. Now looking down here, the original version of Athalia, you have the Awakened version, you have Matria in here, and then a couple other ones, especially like Kalthar guys. So if you don't have Trezenar, Kalthar will work. When Kalthar dies, he goes to the spectral form. When he's in the spectral form, you have to wait till the spectral form dies before Floor will actually fly out of the sky. Again, a very, very tough um, stall team in here. If you're running Liberta, you see right here, Liberta and Lucila has to be run together. But the other formation, they're probably a lot more prevalent in that I would use. And then, of course, Flora in here for Kalthar. But Baden, we also do have a couple other heroes in here that are pretty tough to kill. Um, just for the tanking wise, for the crowd control wise, works very well with the SEAL team. Looking at number seven, it is the Swolus. That is right, guys. Still making a very, very strong showing within a lot of different game modes. The Awakened version of Solus. Now, Naruko still, again, works incredibly well. When you look at the tanking aspect, not only does she have Nadia, but she also provides healing, she provides shielding, she provides buffing. Um, she also provides a considerable amount of damage in this formation. But the two of these, when you look at Solus and then when you look at um, Nevi in here, they will buff up Nadia in here. Again, it's pretty cool to see um, how this really dynamic works. But not only will Nevi buff up the water sprites or the water spirits that we have with the Awakened version of Solus, um, Naruko, it'll do the exact same. And then, of course, um, Tarnos does the same. So it will actually, I believe it buffs up the pillars that he drops around there. So this is the core team within there. Now, if you're like me, guys, I do not have Tarnos. So I actually go for a couple different formations, which is right here. So sometimes I'll use the Kinesis and Rook, but mainly I use Mishka in here. Um, I've tried um, Orthos in here a lot instead of Tarnos doesn't really work incredibly well. I would say even looking at this formation, this piece right here, Kines and Rook, if you don't have Tarnos, Kines and Rook is prime number one. Um, it does work absolutely incredibly well. I use Mishka because again, Orthos doesn't seem to be super effective. The original version of Taylene works depending on the team comp that you're fighting. So definitely keep that one in mind. Then Naruko, you should absolutely build guys. She should be probably one of the top priorities within the Mauler Tower itself, but we have Baden in there. We do have a couple other ones. And again, noting that Lucila working with Liberta in this formation. And then of course the budget option is the Scarlet Comp. This is the older one. I believe this is before we had the Awakened version of Solus, um, but this is one that we've actually run quite a bit. So we do have buffs in there and we are running Scarlet within the formation. So again, seeing exactly which teams you can run. And then the last one is the bonus team, which is the Invade team. Um, the Awakened version of Athelia and Brutus and Anasta. Now, again, this is an older combination. So actually the, the one that we ran didn't have the Awakened version of Athelia, but it did have right here, Scrag. Super effective, guys. The combination of Anasta with the damage and also with the damage mitigation with Brutus, with the crowd control and the damage worked incredibly well, all getting buffed by Scrag that actually goes on there. Um, Joan will go to the enemy side. Mulan will also go to the enemy side. So you'll literally have the, your whole five hero team on the enemy side, getting the damage mitigation, getting the energy and the attack that Scrag does provide. You do have to have Scrag built up with that nine of nine furniture, but works incredibly, incredibly well. And you can see he is kind of um, buffed in for any of these. We have the awakened version of Sophia and then Naruko right through here as well to, to finish out this guide. And again, really, really cool to see this guide over on Reddit. Um, big shout out to the AFK guys. I wanted to share this. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have a, a, a um, time until I can actually do it right now. So I think this has been up for a day or two. But definitely look at your, your formations within the Volcano debuff um, and adjust them as needed based on the guides that are provided, guys. It does work incredibly well. If you have any other teams that are working well that have a high win percentage, Go ahead and drop them in the comments below so we can check them out. But that'll do it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.